Hi, everybody. Welcome to our Relay Websites 101 training. My name is Kayla Boswell. I'm with the Unified Event Support Team and the American Cancer Society. And I have with us today um, a very awesome volunteer named Bridge that I will let introduce himself now. Hello, I'm Cecil Bridgewater, and I'm the online chair for the Relay for Life of Southern Nevada. And I'm going to show you some tips and tricks of what we do here so that might be able to help you uh, do a better job of ma maintaining your website. Awesome. Thank you so much for helping us with this training today, Bridge. So uh, let's start off with the basics. Volunteers need, ac you can get access to your website um, by requesting it through ACS. So all any volunteer who needs access needs to do is go to relayforlife.org slash EMC underscore access to get started. So Bridge has the form pulled up right now, and he's going to walk us through how to request your event management center access. All right. So the first thing you have to do is you have to complete training, uh, which is uh, clicking this link right here. The next step you have to do is you'll have to click on this link right here that says log into training. And once you click it, it's going to reopen this same form and it's going to fill out the bottom part for you. So you don't have to do that uh, again, which is a great thing. It'll be a little confusing when you first click. It'll look like it's reopening the same form uh, and you didn't do anything. Once you've done that, you're going to go to event manager role. You're going to select volunteer. And then you would come here to select re for, Relay for Life. And then you're going to say what year you're actually managing. Or, and then you need to put in the five or six digit uh, uh, for your, your event. And if you don't know it, you can ask your staff partner or the better way of doing it is just go to your event page and look at the number at the very end. This is the number that you would plug in there. And then you would plug that number in and then you are plug in any other additional events you were doing. Like, let's say you are doing multiple events for Relay for Life, you would select them. If you're not doing anything else, you don't have to do that. The next thing you have to do is you have to select acknowledgement that you're going to uh, follow all the data privacy rules and guidelines. Now, one thing to remember is the because you'll have access, you will have what's called PII, which is personal information, identifiable information. And that is protected information that kind of ties people to where they live and phone numbers. And we don't want to get that out there so it's readily available to anybody. We need to keep uh, control of that. And then it'll have your name and your password, not password, your account. And then you would click submit. And then this would go to the appropriate uh, people to actually give you access. And I think it's three to five business days. They will send you a note. And they're really quick. It's usually not three to five, but they usually tell you that. And it will come back and give you access to the actual website that you can actually log in. Well, one tip I'm going to add for this, Bridge, is before you request access to your website, make sure you are registered on your Relay for Life website page so that you have your login and everything. It makes our web team, um, it makes it a little easier on them to be able to connect your access. So after you have your access, though, um, you can go back to your website and then there's kind of two sides that you'll be able to work with with the EMC. The front side is where you can make changes to information and customize pages. And the back side, which we call the Event Management Center or EMC, um, that's where you can do some customer service stuff. So let's start with the front side. After you log in in the upper right hand corner of the page, you'll see you have your event manager link. And then you'll also get that gray bar on the side with the pencil. So. Um, Bridge, why don't we start with making some edits to the event details page from the front side that all events need to do so people have accurate information. Yeah, this is a great one because this is something that's relatively new uh, that will actually pop up several weeks before the event. And so you need to fill it out. Uh, when we click here, you're going to see that we have not filled it out yet. And this is something that we're going to be working on. But we'll click on this underneath the date. It will have more details. So you'll click this right here. And then you have various details. And then to access and edit this page, you would come over here to this pencil that's right here in the right-hand corner. You would click pencil. And now, as you can see, everything becomes editable that you can make updates here, right? So you can put information in that you want to have. You can add pictures. You can do anything that you want to do. Uh, as you can see, a relay lot for life. And then they want you to update the information for information and where it is, right? For details. 
so that if anybody clicks on the more details option or they get the pop up at the uh, the week before, they'll have all the information readily available. So you do have to update this page to make sure that the information is readily available, even though most a lot of stuff is on the other pages. And then to make an update, you just have to click in this field and then just type whatever you're going to type. So if I was going to replace this, I would just highlight this and then put any updates that I need to make. So it's very simple. And you could change the order of everything by using the up and down arrows. You can hide something if you want to hide it by clicking on this publish box. I, I wouldn't recommend you push delete because it's an option. You lose it if you delete it. I would just unpublish it so that it doesn't show up. But it's still there in case you want to bring it back. Uh, and then that's the basic. And then it talks about different setups, about it, your checklist, on what kind of things that you want to, want people to bring, make sure that they are prepared for. And then you have what not to bring. Again, we don't want tobacco and alcohol or pets aside from service animals. And then we talk about the campsite uh, selection and setup. And then we'll have the schedule of events that we plug in for the event. And we're still at the beginning. Our event itself is not scheduled till September. And so we've got a lot of things that we're still planning to get worked out. And then we have the frequently asked questions. So if you have questions that pop up that is unique to your area, you can make the changes here. And then you have additional sections if you want to create, and then you have your contact down here. All right. So there's also other places on the different pages of the website where you can add photos and videos. Um, so Bridge, why don't you show us the steps for adding those things that are specific to your event? Yeah, great. And one thing I did forget to mention on the last section is that when you have this section done after you make your updates, you do have to click this save button right here. OK, uh, yes. Very important. Don't forget to save your work. <laughs> OK, so the first thing you have to do is when you first log into the website, you got to go to the My Event tab, right? Once you're there and you see this information right here, again, you click on this bu uh, button right here with the pencil just like we did on the more details tab. So you have the exact same steps. You come down here to the sections. So if you want to do a new announcement, you can do that. But when she's talking about pictures and videos, the best thing is to do is come down here to the section that uh, it's kind of by itself uh, where it talks about new section. You can click on this. And then you have different options that you can select on your page. So if you want to do like a video or pictures, my, what I have found is easy, that's easiest is if you click here, it's going to bring up this little option right here with pictures. And you can put your picture here. And then you can do, a, so you click this little button right here. And then you select new image. And then you select the appropriate image that you want to do. And then once it shows up in the screen, you select it, it will show up here. And then you're going to click this little button right here that says link. And then you're going to link where you want that pic to, uh, picture to go. So like, let's say you have an Instagram uh, uh, gallery. If you know the Instagram gallery, you can actually put a cover shot here. Uh, and then when they click on that picture, it will take them to the, in the Instagram uh, gallery. And you can actually put in here Instagram gallery. You put your Instagram video in there. And once you select it, I'm going to do it. And then I'll, I'll depublish it afterwards. You Remember, you have to click this Save button. And then if you click this X, it brings you back to your page. And these would be the two pictures of your, or whatever you have. The one thing that I should have mentioned is you can actually customize where this text is showing by these little arrows up here where you talk about uh, you highlight it, and then you have this where you can center it. So it's centered. You can bold it. You can underline it. You can do all kinds of stuff to make sure that it's uh, set up the way you want. So you have some uh, formatting uh, capability up at the top. If you have videos, you would select a picture, and then you would select the, the, the YouTube channel where it's actually being linked at, and it would take you right to the video. Or the one thing, the great thing about YouTube is this is a very important thing. This is what I really like about the, the option is if you go to section and you come all the way down here, there's a YouTube video link. You can click on this YouTube video link and it allows you to put the actual link to the video right here. And it will actually show you the video that actually will play uh, when they click the play button. So this is an option to do it this way also. So there's two ways of doing videos and doing uh, 
um, pictures. All right, excellent. Thank you. Now you guys know how to put things specifically from your relay on your homepage. So uh, next thing we're gonna move into is some of the event details information or things that you have to customize from the event manager side, like the date, the location, times, things like that. So that's in what we call the EMC side of the website or the back end. Um, Bridge, why don't you show us how to get into the EMC and how to make those changes to that information? Awesome. Uh, this one is probably a little more complicated than the front end. This is where we make the basic updates. So the first thing when you first pop into this is called Event Center. And this is all these different links will take you to various points of the uh, information that shows up at the very top. So if you click on the first one, this is where you would set your fundraising goal. You could set team sizes if you want to, and you could set the public event type if you need to, right? Typically, I think pe most people leave these two blank, and then they put a goal in here. Then you go to the election uh, location information, and then you would put your location where it's located at. You put your street address. You put the city. You put the state. You put the zip codes. It's important to do that because the map system will actually point to where it is so people can actually find the location. And then you show United States, you show what county you're in, you show what region. And typically, I don't touch anything below here because this is usually set up when they set up your website. So if somebody wants to mail something, it goes to the ACS desk. And since the majority of our, I think it's majority, right, Kayla, that are now remote partners. So this goes to a location where all the email, all the mail goes to, and then it's uh, disseminated and worked on from there. You also have event uh, options. When you get new teams, you want to set this email address up to an appropriate email address so that every time a new team joins, the person gets notified so that they can start engaging with the team captains of the team. So it's important to put somebody in there so that they can actually get the information and you don't have to keep going to the website to see who signed up. It'll automatically give you an email message and I can show you what one looks like uh, later if we want that. And then we have different follow-up interviews for autoresponders. As you can see, I haven't set any of these up because uh, we haven't really used them because we do a lot of engagement directly with the people. We don't want to use uh, uh, autoresponders to tell people things. We want to tell them you know, through our team ambassadors, et cetera. And then the last thing that's important on here is your e-commerce store uh, associated. Normally this is set up to the basic setup, but this is where they order the luminaria. So if you are going beyond the thing of the just the bags, there's other stores that you can select and there's a resource location that will give you that store that you can actually plug in because they have things like uh, bags, they have things like tiki torches, et cetera. So they have all kinds of different things that you can select. So this is something that, to turn on. Now, one thing that a lot of sites probably don't know is like a, you have to, I would set off a cutoff date on this luminaria because you don't want people trying to buy a luminaria on the day of because when we're out at the site, you may not have access to the website and be able to see who ordered a luminaria. So what we do is we typically will put an announcement on to say luminaria is going to close on a specific date. And then what we do is we remove the e-commerce site uh, from here. So the luminary won't take any more orders after that specific date. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Bridge. So as you guys see in the black bar across the top, there are some different options. We're going to skip event emails for a second and go to the customer service tab. And Bridge is going to talk a little bit about your participant and your team list. So a lot of times you you might get contacts saying, oh, I need to find somebody or I need to move somebody, et cetera. So you have two of these, these two buttons right here. This is a managed participant list. And this lets you uh, see all the different participants. And if you need to manage something and edit somebody or find somebody. So for example, if I was to go here and say search, and then I tried to search for my name, and then do a search. It'll show you the person's name and another person that's got a similar name. You click manage participant and it lets you make any updates that you have on them. So you can make it. And I, for the sake of the exercise, I'm not going to do PII information. Uh, click on them because it does have PII information on here, right? So I don't know why everybody in the world to know where I live, et cetera, right? So. <laughs> 
but you can go in here and you can make contact and you can do all kinds of stuff. And, and this is how you do the participants. Uh, and then you have your go back to customer service. You have managed teams. So if you need to go in here and you need to manage a team, you can go in here and team believe. And let's say you've got a team. That's all the team. And sh if she wanted to change the team captain, we could potentially do that in, in this section right here. And then this is also how you can uh, add this is this is one thing about if somebody comes in and says, hey, I've got a problem and I need to do a uh, uh, thing to me. This is where you would go in and make your updates for their gifts if they need to make a change. All right. So one common question a lot of website managers will get is this specific scenario. Um, somebody came in to make a donation to them and it is not showing up on their page. So we need to go in and find the donation. Uh, and make sure it's credited to the right place. Bridge, can you show us how to search for gifts? So you, that's a very simple option. You come down here where it says search for gifts. Okay, so now we're in search for gifts. And then you, if you know the person that came from, you can plug their name in here, or you can look for values for like zero to 50. So if I go, uh, just for the sake of the exercise, if I go in here and I say, who is a donor? Let's just say Cecil donated something, right? So then Cecil's uh, here, he donated, and it was actually set where it says soft credit, see the participant information. If I need to change this to, it said the event or was blank right here, I could click here on this soft credit, and then I can change it to a participant, I can change it to a team, or I can make it an event uh, selection. And then if I it's a participant, then I'm going to select the appropriate person. And let's just say, and then you would select Mary and it would actually show up under Mary the next time you did it, right? Very simple, easy process. You can make a lot of things. A lot of times what happens is when this occurs, it's usually when they went to the website and they made a, a, a donation to the website. I make a donation but it didn't apply to a specific person because when you go to the website, it goes just to the event. It doesn't go to a specific person unless you go to their page on the team and make the selection there. So and from time to time, you'll also have people ask you to move them from one team to another, or they had somebody sign up on their team that wasn't supposed to be there. So what are the sets for moving registrations around? That's a great one. So if I come here and we select participants again, and let's just say I'm going to do a search and I'm going to search for me again. And then you're going to uh, manage person, and then you're going to see where it says change team right here. You would change team, and then you can do it. You can scroll down through all your teams, but if you got a lot of teams, you can just come here and say, you like, I'm going to go find my old team, and I'm going to select this, and I would move to team UPS. And that's what you would do to make the change. Very simple, easy process, and then you can do that. And this is also the same place where you uh, you you'd get a confirmation. So if I selected this, you would get this and just follow the steps and there's buttons on there. Uh, and one thing is uh, on there where they talk about um, uh, changing if they need, I don't know if we talked about it, but if they need to change a team captain, you do it in the same location, right? Yes, you do. All right, so now we're going to backtrack because the EMC also has a really nice emailing feature to make it easy to share information out to participants. Um, Bridge, I know you have some emailing tips and tricks you wanted to share. Why don't you lay them on us? Well, uh, this is a good one uh, that we need to uh, look at. If you were creating an email, uh, let's we'll do a fake one right here. So we'll talk about doing it. You do a create new email. You select the email name. You put in what it is. I typically leave these ones like they are. I don't really touch these. You put in who the, the, the person is. And then one tip that needs to be known is do not change this address right here, right? If you try to change this address and try to send it, it will bounce back at you telling you this address is not a cancer.org address because it needs an email address going back to cancer.org. So you would change your address here. 
And you got to be careful about this because sometimes if you use the auto uh, complete feature, it automatically changes the address in both locations. So don't uh, make sure this one always says news at cancer.org. And then you put your email address in here and then you have your subject. And then you click next. And then you select the appropriate type of email. We typically would use the in, uh, engagement unless we're sending things out to somebody else. Uh, and then you type in your email here. It's a very common thing where you can do test message. You can do, you can bold all of this. It's all easy to adjust. You can add pictures. The one thing that's not told here, and it's kind of covered in here, before you can use your add your pictures or you add whatever, you have to put it in the tuck back on in the file library, right? So for the sake of example, I'm going to go back here. You have to go to the event center and you have to load any of the pictures that you might want to load here. And they're under images. Now, one thing I learned in a past email a training class that we gave a long time ago was whenever you send out emails, you always want to put your presenting sponsors out there uh, on the email so that you have that. So instead of adding every logo for every sponsor and putting them all on there and adding them on every time, which is a very time consuming task, create a banner, right? Using Canva or Photoshop or something like 600 pixels across and then put all your pictures on there and then all you have to do is select this picture when it comes time to do the email so if i go back to the email and let's pretend like this was my email and then i'm done that, that was the message right and then i would come here and i would select my picture I come down here to this drop down and select my sponsor and select insert and my sponsors are all listed across so I don't have to go and do load each sponsor on there. It's important because if you remember that when we do these um, uh, letters and uh, marketing videos and everything, we need to give credit to our sponsors. So we need to make sure that they're on every email that goes out, they're going on all your marketing things. So it's best to create a banner so you can actually do that on there. Now, let's pretend I was doing all of this and I got through this. And then when you get to this section, you have to click this convert plain text because not everybody has an email that will actually take all your videos you click next and then you would send yourself a uh you'd run a spam report to make sure it's not going to appropriate work I, I rarely use this button here i normally would send a test to see what it looks like an email would be sent to me exactly what it looks like i would click next and then i would click approved and i'm going to approve this i'll go back and i can't do it and then you would select begin delivery. You select your current or who, who you want to go to, previous event, current event. Now, uh, Kayla, this is one question I have for you, is if you've never ran an event before, you won't have access to previous event participants, correct? You will have access to previous event participants provided you had a previous event. If you're a brand new relay, that this is your first year with a website, then you won't have previous event participants. But no matter what, how many years you've had access to the EMC, the previous participants will be in there as long as you had a previous relay. Yeah, excellent. And so you go click next. I usually select all and then click next. And then you click next again. Here's the one thing that people will miss. If you don't do this, your emails won't go to anybody. You have to select all these boxes. If you want everybody to get it, I, I select every box in here because I want to make sure that everybody gets it right, because there might be teams that don't have a uh, they're not on a team. There might be people that don't uh, have uh, they have uh, team captains and uh, co-captains. I want to make sure everybody gets the email. If I'm going to send it, I normally click it. You click next. I'm, I don't know how far I can go without having to send this out. And then you would say send, I'm not going to click this button, send immediately and it goes out to everybody. And it takes very, it's very quick after that. So you want to make sure that you follow those steps. Make sure you click all those one boxes because if you don't, people will not get the emails. Now, people who won't get the emails are the people who have selected they don't want emails. So you'll have to find another way to communicate with them. You're not going to know who they are because you can't see that. 
So the websites are a really great tool to use for your relay. They're a registration tool, they're a fundraising tool, they're a communication tool, and the websites are really big and can do a lot of things. Um, we couldn't cover all of that in this training, but we do have some resources to share to help you along the way. So Bridge, why don't you wrap us up with resources? You have to go to relay.org slash EMC support to get to this particular page. Yes. Right okay. Uh, and then all of your information that you have about the actual event page, all you how to create the greeting, how to create content pages, manage your participants, manage teams. If you ever have a question on how to do anything, it's all very simple. It's all click and drag. So like we talked about manage participants. If I clicked on the link, it takes you through screenshots of showing you exactly how you need to go manage anything. Uh, and then if you got all the various different locations, you got how to do emails, you got how to edit web pages, you got to do fundraising, you have, you have some other organizational stuff to tie into Relay. So there's a lot of good detail in here. And you can download the whole guide so you have it all the time and never have to go to this page by clicking that button right there. And it's I can tell you I've had to use this page a couple of times because I couldn't figure something out. So I actually uh, went and downloaded it and actually kept it. All right. Well, thank you everybody for joining us today for Relay Websites 101. Um, if you have questions or still can't figure something out, you can't find the support that you need, don't forget to ask your staff partner or you can ask Bridge. Yeah, and you can reach me at rflsnv at gmail.com. And I'll be glad to help anybody that needs the extra help because I understand that it's challenging and some people are not very technical based. That's okay. Um, but we want to make sure everybody's event page gets the love and attention that it needs. So don't be afraid to ask for help, right? And I'd be more than glad to help anybody that needs it. All right. Well, thank you, Bridge, for sharing all of your expertise and knowledge with us today. I'm sure this will help a lot of relayers. All right. Thank you.